What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Flow State Podcast with Harry Mack. This is a super fun episode. We have an awesome guest for y'all, somebody whose podcast I have been on multiple times, somebody who really knows how to play and have fun, and uh, also somebody who uh, is a veteran in the podcast game, and we're lucky to have him on early because he helped tweak our camera setup and everything's looking better than it's ever looked. Uh, Rick Glassman, y'all. Let's have some fun. This is for my Flow State. Add it. Add it. Kyle, know we back at it. Ain't it crazy how the mind works magic? We gon' show you the method behind the madness. Cause this is for my five, four, three. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Flow State Podcast with yours truly, Harry Mack. I'm so excited to be here with y'all and incredibly excited to have in my presence a very, very special guest. And uh, someone who I am uh, very honored to consider a friend. Uh, whoa. And somebody who I hope that's okay. And I hope it's mutual. Yeah, I wasn't woeing that you called me a friend. The honored. Oh, dude, it is an honor. People fluff, though, on pods. They do. And, and are, you, are you newer to pods? Yeah, this is only, I mean, this is probably our fifth recording. So uh, I just want to let you know. Yes. Because you'll figure it out later. Yeah. When you watch yourself back or when you watch other people, people are way too loving, mm. giving, flattering. Yeah. yeah. To where it sometimes feels disingenuous. Yes. I'm not calling you. I'm just saying like, dude, one of my best boys. Where's my camera, by the way? <laughs> uh, it's kind of weird. You're this one. This? Yeah. This is our main camera right here. But This is the one to address. They're all two shots. We're new, man. You guys look great. Yeah, I got to talk to you guys about eye lines and compliments, <laughs> but we'll do it at, uh, after filming 10. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, let me try a new intro. We have a guest here. He's pretty cool. Okay, uh, split the difference, Okay, but more towards the first one. Okay, okay, Also, okay, okay. Here, here's a little trick. Yeah. Even if you have an idea of what you're going to say, because even if you don't, no one, your mind works like this. Yeah. So this is a little acting trick. Yeah. Um, it's what you do like when you're playing emotional. Okay. You see how I'm thinking? Yeah. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. If you f- try and find the thing, mm. all right, like for example, like yeah. you know, you lean forward, you do that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then yeah. it's like, oh, he's like really feeling it. He's really. Th- this next guy is one of the most talented rappers in the world. Or watch this. This next guy, all right, I mean, obviously, he's one of the most talented rappers in the world. <laughs> like you're like, yes, you're yes. finding it. Yeah, yeah, I like it. You know? I like it. Okay, okay, let me try. All right, all right guys, uh, very excited to have this, this special guest here. Um, this guy. He's hilarious. Uh, he's 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 one of the warmest people I know. Honestly, was that too much? I mean, what are you doing? Keep going. Oh, sorry, you're killing me. And uh, he does so many things. He's 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 a man who wears many hats. And uh, I've had the opportunity to jam with him on several occasions. He's here today. He's one of the oh, and I should mention one of the biggest innovators in the podcast space. I would say. And uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm really blessed to have him on, on my rather new, rather young podcast to give us all the tips and pointers. Uh, my friends, Rick Glassman. Yeah, good. Yeah? Yeah. Solid? Yeah. Any pointers? Yeah, but, you know, again, <laughs> we don't even have the proper eye lines. <laughs> all right, we'll save it for after. Um, Before I forget, um, uh, uh. Uh, what's your what's your version of DJ DJ's Jazzy Jeff? Who's your jazz? What's his name? Uh, Sir Jazz. Sir Jazz. Yes. Uh, he has a beat package. Yes. I might want to cop that. You should. Well, how does that work? Am I allowed to use that on my pod? Uh, probably. And we can ask him. Yeah, we got to talk to we'll, him. We'll text him I'll today. Throw, I'll give him. I don't know, like thirty grand or something. If I could just. He's got to give it back. We filmed that. Oh, he's got to give it back. Yeah, but like, oh, I'll okay. I'll give it to him. Uh, I'm sure that that could work, yeah. Because okay. he can use it, he can put it in the market, he can maybe generate some some passive income off it, and then pay you back after. Yeah, however it works. But like, because uh, when you came on, we use uh, royalty free beats all the time. Yes, but some of them get flagged by YouTube, and some of them yeah. don't. Um, yeah, and uh, I've put together a folder of ones that that are good and blah blah blah. But like, yeah. when I was listening to that, I'm like, oh, I would love to add that. Oh, dude, that would be amazing. Yeah, Jazz is the man. I'm sure he'll be down. Absolutely. Nice. Uh, let's get into it, dude. Let's get into it. Dude, thank you for being here. Appreciate you. Uh, I've had the opportunity to be on your podcast twice, once by myself and then once with Lamorne Morris. I, I can't I can't get out of my head about something. that This is stuff that I, I obsess over. Yes. I'm so confused with the camera setup. 
Dude, we I, need to figure out the guest camera a little bit better. Should it be like over beside the couch? Yeah, okay, so here's your line, right? Right here. This is your line. <clears throat> From here to here. From this tree to that cor- thing. Don't put any cameras on this side of it, obviously. But we got we got to get one right there for mm-hmm. the for the center for the for the two of us. Yeah. That's that one. This is going to be Harry's cam, right? So also K- Harry's looking this way. Right. Yeah. So let's get a little bit more of his face. That's fine there. But if we could bring it over slightly here and bring this, that's my camera, and bring that over here. Yeah. Because when I'm looking here, I was no camera. So like, I just feel like I'm being watched. <laughs> you are. Yeah, but like in an in an unusual way. <laughs> okay. So we have to ask. We have to solve this right now. Like, are we going to solve this right now? Yeah. And also okay. leave some comments. Sam- also, what you what you like better? Because I'm not seeing what this looks like. <laughs> I, I, I very much could be wrong. I've been wrong like eight times before. No, I mean, we were talking about this before you came in here. So Yeah, so uh, let me see. So, so, so hold up, hold up. We can't see the multicam, really. Oh, right. We're just, we can't see the multi. Yeah, so let's, let's, are these all the same lenses? Uh, no, they're all, this is, um, these two have the same focal length. That one's a little wider. Which one's the wide one? Uh, the one on you, so that's camera two. Which one's the, which, which we're gonna, you know. Which is wide? So this one right here. Okay, so like, let's bring that in the middle. I, I don't know. Okay, yeah. you, listen, you're in charge, dude. But, but I want to see. But I don't like lose all the focus. Show me my camera. Take a picture. Pic, oh, when I'm looking at Harry, take a picture of my camera. <laughs> this is incredible. Wait, what? When you're looking. When at I'm looking at Harry, let me take a picture of my camera so I could see okay. what what it looks like. Yeah. How you been, man? Things good? Oh, everything's. How's, ch- how's your family? Yeah, oh, everyone's good. You, you know? got the picture? Oh yeah. All right, let me take a look at that. Okay, dude. My camera it needs to be right here. This is my camera. But people already know, but look at this. That's my camera, dude. <laughs> that's not my camera. That's not me. That's that's not a shot of that's Okay, funny. so what what if we just what I'm if we just high level, mid level podcast? We want to see my fucking face. Okay, okay, so listen, listen. I think we shouldn't ch- change any lenses. That seems too complicated. But what if we just make that Rick and that me? Can we start there? Let's try it. I think. <laughs> looking for tips i just didn't know it would happen live yeah this is but this is better We're, we'll so do it do? live so if you're looking at harry we got to catch like just out of the that's not a telephoto right i can go yeah like, put put yeah what, what, get the goods baby oh get the fucking goods all right. <laughs> all right now zoom out some in case we get some action Correct. there we go yeah and you can push it it's, it's split the diff we don't need all that dead space. What are we doing? That's 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 the go- that's the guest cam. That's the goods. That is the goods. This is why the people are chiming in. Oh, that's oh, good. Oh, buddy that is boy. nice, buddy boy. All right. Okay. And then what about my camera? Now, for, for uh, we don't have a telephoto for you, do we? Um, no, it's got a little bit of. Okay. Stuff we can make here. Wow, this is amazing, dude. And are, what 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 resolution are we filming in? We're gonna shoot. We're filming 4K. Great. You're not gonna export 4K, are you? And, uh, yeah, we'll edit so like 1080. So we'll right, so so we could also we could also push it and post. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of I like to leave a little bit. Of room. Same, same. I wouldn't even mind a little bit more here, so we could leave a little. But we got the room. Yeah, there we, buddy. What have we been doing? There we go. Ready? Is that it? <clears throat> well, I'm gonna zoom out just a little. How much do you charge for the the podcast consulting service typically? PCS? Yeah. No, I, I don't. I don't. I just I, the, the, this. When our products look better and audiences mm. uh, become challenged and start to see mm. the craft, they are educated on what matters. And then mediocrity isn't something that's enough anymore, yeah. which we all thrive from. Yes. Oh, I feel like you just, you hit the nail on the head. Man. Mm-hmm. That's why they call me the hammer boy. We'll be right back. If you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices. And at Marshall Carpet One, you'll find thousands of choices, including carpet, hardwood, rugs, and luxury vinyl. So make the right choice and visit Marshall Carpet One and Rug Gallery. And we promise, with more than 50 years as a family-owned business, we've got you covered! Wow. Uh, I don't know if you're leaving all this stuff in for the audio only version, but my suggestion is yes. We probably are going to have to show this in the video, man. Oh, oh, this is, this is, 
This is Pod- amazing. Podcasts aren't specials. Podcasts are moments in time that people are capturing, and this is a moment in time. Yeah. Can we uh, get some props for Sam, who just did this on the fly right let's now? Let's go. Let's go. Uh, turned a monitor all the way around. You guys can't see that, but um, no. this guy is killing it. There was work to be done there. Wow. It looks better. Is, it looks dude, better. thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Man. Now, another time when you're, when you're wanting to play yeah. some more, Sam, I would experiment with bringing these cameras a little bit more out this way. Okay. So mm. we're not on the... F- it's just we're seeing a little more eyes. But this is right. great. This because is great. of the direction I'm looking, you're saying like... Shoo, yeah. Yep. And yeah. then... Shoo, yeah. yeah. Like if, if we were going to make this real cinematic, yes. we could go like dirty over the shoulder here, <laughs> right there. Right. I don't like that. And also, we're trying to have people watch us in a room, not... Uh, pretend it's a story yeah uh but uh this is good i'm happy with this oh yeah i'm happy with this dude um, this is why your podcast is so amazing man because of your your visual because of mind. our eye lines because of the eye lines yeah primarily uh no but really because of the uh you guys have to watch take your shoes off if you if you don't watch it to our audience make sure you check out the podcast the animations, dude, the editing, all the overlays, everything Thank you, you guys Shout added. out to John Michael and Tom Bates who edit with me and do the animations with me. And uh, uh, shout out to Matt Day who, who has been doing the audio for the mm. music for us. Yeah, the way you edit the freestyles is incredible too in terms of adding effects and y- you produce them like they're actual songs. Yeah, uh, he, he, Matt, who mixes most of, our, uh, uh, most of the episodes, uh, his background is music production and he would mm. do that stuff. So uh, we've dabbled, dabbled with it a little bit. Uh, on certain episodes, and then when you come on, it's like uh, we gave him a heads up. Like we'll give you a couple extra days, oh, have some fun. It's so dope, dude. It it adds so much to it. Was that always your vision for your podcast to do all the extra animations and stuff like that, or did that sort of evolve organically? So the uh, I was podcasting for years before I ever even put a podcast out. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have people on. Uh, Lamorne did it. Uh, uh, I say I say Lamorne because. For people that don't know who I am yet, if you're going to check out my podcast, uh, I've done two with Harry. Either one are great. Yeah. Um, both of them are my top 10 favorite episodes I've ever done. Oh, man. And uh, uh, so Lamorne was one of them. But yep. so so I have a lot of very, very funny friends. I'm a comedian, and I, yeah. I really believe I have some of the funniest people in the world are, are buddies. We're all buddies. Yeah. And I was doing these podcasts, and they were just way too personal. At least I felt they were at the moment. I have, yeah. I have created what boundaries I have of what I'm willing and wanting to share publicly. Yeah. Um, and I hadn't had those yet. So we recorded all these pods and I never put them out. Two reasons. One, they f- I felt too vulnerable with them. And two, the truth is, which is ridiculous. At the time, podcasting wasn't that popular. And mm. I didn't understand how to get stuff on iTunes. Yeah. Like, wh- what does <laughs> yeah. that mean? How do you do it? So I'm right. like, ah, ah. So then, yeah. I, then I was like, I'm hanging out with my friends and we're laughing so much. And I'm like, I just want to record this. Yeah. And Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee is one of my favorite shows. And that was yeah. that was just like funny people hanging out, but they, they cut it down. So my thought was, let me... And at the time, my best friends, John and, and Brent, um, lived in my... We all lived in the same building, and they would come over all the time. Okay. And I was like, let's record this, just us hanging out for hours. Yeah. And then just chop it down into the best, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, a buddy of mine... Uh, George Krikus, who's an unbelievable musician, who now I didn't even think about it. It's, he's a singer songwriter. Okay. I would love to have him on with us sometime Let's and have him it. play and, and sing shit with oh, us. Oh, hell yeah. Dude, I love you. I want to have you do stuff with Dude, you all the time. I love you too, man. I've, I've had, seriously, side note, and I want to let you get back to it. I have had the best time on your podcast both times. They're unbelievable. Po- yeah, they're, they're, so fun. Their podcasts are unbelievable, man. So fun. Uh, and um, uh, he's a big podcast listener, and I was like, let's. Maybe we can make this a podcast, not like trim it down to five minutes, but I want to take a lot of stuff out. Yeah. Just keep the funny in the setup. Yeah. And he's like, no, let, this is just a podcast. Keep it as is. Mm. So that's got me into podcasting. So we started doing that. And then um, I was uh, with a little bit of help from George at the time, but I was editing these all. And a lot of times I would, uh, when I was watching back, yeah. Um, I noticed, I came into some self-awareness seven year or so years ago where yeah. like, I didn't know how I was being received, mm. and I found out some people were gentle with me and told me some stuff, and I learned some things about myself. Yada yada. Long story short, I became a little a bit more aware. Yeah. And then, and I was learning about myself, and I was. I'm just not trying to get into too much of a different kind of story, but no, no. So then I'm doing this podcast and I'm editing and I'm watching myself, and I was getting so, as I know people probably do, a lot of people, but like. I was not just getting embarrassed. Yeah. I was uh, like triggered mm. with like watching some of the things I would say yeah. 
or watching how much I'd interrupt, which I still do, but not in the same level. Yeah. Um, and just how I was just like, I, I was so uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. So two things happened from that. One, I learned by watching and editing myself just, Oh, well then don't do that. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 But I, but I also learned why some of the things didn't connect mm. and I, you know, obsessing over the camera angles and such, uh, is uh, what, what I was just talking about is quite literally a superficial thing. Yeah. But the intention behind it is also like the difference between the audience. Um, I'll use me as an example, yeah. but anybody, the difference between an audience liking me or not is on their own opinions, but heavily influenced by reaction shots. Yes. Right. So if I say something that's insulting to you, yeah. and then you get flustered or shut down. I'm an asshole. Right. If I say something that's insulting and then you're laughing yeah. and yes ending it and going back, wow, look at the chemistry. Yes. I'm the same exact person. Yes. How am I being received? Yep. So what I realized is sometimes stuff wasn't hitting and it could have, and then yeah. it would have been funny. So why wasn't it hitting? That's what I could learn as a communicator and performer. Yeah. But could I have it land with my audience even if it didn't with my guest? Yeah. And the way I started doing that was contextualizing my intentions so like if, if if you missed the joke yeah i put up the picture or a video or music yes. or something and they're like oh i get what rick was trying to do yeah 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 so it helped me like articulate myself i get a second chance yeah to be understood it's almost like a window into your mind it's like this is what i was thinking this is what i was intending to get across like how you'll you'll tell a joke maybe further away from the mic and then you'll ask the editor to to subtitle it yeah. so that it's there. Or if you make like a more obscure reference, you show the picture so that yeah. we can connect those dots when we're watching at home. A lot of times I'll also like, uh, you know, I talk to, we edit it out, but I talk to uh, uh, us, to the camera, or right yeah. after I leave notes. Hey, I think this part missed. Um, I know why. Or uh, let's put up a picture of whatever, you know, 30 seconds earlier so yeah. people are following along when I get to the thing. Yeah. Um, that got me into this mindset of live editing and the thinking about uh, thinking about which we talked about on our first podcast yeah. of being able to be present in what you're doing, but also where are you going to be in one bar or, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, in the next joke. Yes. And uh, so I did this thing on an episode in the, in the first year of my podcast, I'm coming up on year five. Yeah. And uh, I Congrats. said, thank you. Yeah. I said, if I could, if I had a budget, if I could animate, mm. I would want to do this, this, yeah. this, this, yeah, yeah. this. And then this guy who I don't know who watched my podcast, his name's Tom Bates, who's one of my good friends now. Yeah. Uh, he animated it and just put it on Instagram. Hell yeah. I'm like, this is incredible. Yeah. Could we do this? And he goes, sure. And we did a few. And then he's done pretty much every episode for uh, over 200 episodes now. Yeah. Um, or almost 200 episodes. That's amazing. And uh, yeah, so now we get to do stuff. And and I've had people on who, you know, who are voice actors for big cartoons and stuff. Yeah. And I have them come in and... Now their characters come in and they're guests with us. And it's Amazing. like such a cool tool, but it, but it offers, it's funny. Yeah. I think it's engaging. Uh, it's also like a kind of a, a specific thing that my podcast has, but also the intention behind it is, is, is allowed me to contextualize after the fact. Yeah. And the same way that, you know, you would edit a movie or you would, you would do post on your music. Yeah. Um, I love it. Dude, it's so fun to watch, man. It's, it's, it's epic, and it's very unique because of that. Like, I don't see any other podcast doing that the way that you guys do it. Thank so, you. I love it, man. Do you still find it challenging to watch yourself? Because you said it was hard to watch yourself. You would, you know, it, it brought you this self-awareness, um, but you were triggered by a lot of what you saw. Is that still yeah. true? Um, uh, I could answer that, but I, I just was talking a whole bunch, and yeah. I could watch <laughs> myself now, and, I, and I'm going to ask you anyway. <laughs> Will you tell me how you feel about that first, about watching yes, yourself? I, I absolutely will. Because uh, I struggle watching myself back, like, and I always sort of have. Um, in the beginning, you know, I was a one-man show, so I edited all my own videos. And it was so hard mm -hmm. to dive in. I would procrastinate that. Like, you know, I, I would know that I needed to start to get the video done on time. And I would wait a day, sometimes two days, because I just didn't want to crack open the folder and watch back through. What's the, raw the feeling? Footage. What's the negative feeling when you give an example of something? What's the judgment? So early on, it was gorilla bars. So it was me walking out in, in public spaces, approaching people to freestyle for them, and 
uh, for some reason, when I'm there, when I'm in my body and I'm doing it, I can just, I can build myself up and say, here we go. I'm going to go approach these strangers. Yeah, because you're not watching risk. you. You're watching them. Yes, exactly. Exactly. But to watch myself do it from outside of myself, um, I would just, it was like I had to watch like this. It felt like, I, I felt anxiety, you know, and I felt a tightness in the body. And that thing that people say where it's like, oh, it makes me cringe, you know, which I, I Yeah, don't... but give me something. Like, you watch something and you saw what? The way I walked, the way I looked, the way I rapped, the way I said, the way they saw me. Give me some Sometimes examples. Sometimes it was my intro, you know. Excuse me. Uh, I'm famous <laughs> for my, you know. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hey, how you guys doing today? How are you guys doing today? How are you guys you know? doing today? <laughs> hey, my name is Harry Mack. I'm actually a freestyle rapper. i um, making videos for my YouTube and TikTok. Uh, would you would guys, guys be, be willing to throw, throw me some random words, words for a freestyle? freestyle? Right. I just didn't like hearing that, you know? I was like, wow, why do I sound so uncool? Like, I'm going to sell them right. something. Right. You know, why can't I, like, David Blaine this? You know, you know how David Blaine was just like, yo, what's up? Yeah. You guys want to see some magic? Yeah. You know, I always thought that that would be cooler. Uh, but, you know, it's not my... I mean, obviously, my intro is very natural to me because I've done it every single time. So you, you don't feel that way anymore? Or you still do it? I embrace the... I, it's still... It makes me chuckle now. But I kind of, I kind of accept it. Right. You know, it's like, this is my way of, of breaking the ice. And I think it helps prime me for what I'm about to do. Because it's the same every time, mm -hmm. you know? So when I walk up to people, there are so many unknowns. And it's like, well, this is one thing that's not an unknown. It's locked in. I, I always say, excuse me. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? So, so you see yourself um, not being cool. Yeah. And you, your identity is cool. I'm rapping. Rapping is cool. Right. There's a certain, there's a certain uh, uh, culture to this. And yes. Clothes and energy. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, uh, Stand up has helped me a lot with that. Really? Because I understand that. Like, I've, I, I, I'm a, I, I, basketball is where I got my confidence. Basketball is where yeah. I first got friends. I was good at something. I kept yeah. getting better at something. I felt strong. Mm. And, um, people looked at me a certain way and then they would see me play and they're like, you know, like, oh, which are cool. You yeah. know, like it worked in my favor almost. Like, yes. I had goggles, Woody Harrelson and White Man Can't Jump type kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so, like, for a while, I identified as, like, I'm a basketball player. I still, even now, the way I'm selling, like, I'm great. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. there is this identity. But you are a great basketball player, right? I mean, you're, it's, you're good. It's insane. Uh, check yeah. out I Am Phenomenal on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> yes. I'll, I'll send you a, a clip. We'll cut to a little thing. You always yes. promote. Since I was a young teen, everybody was me. Nobody liked me. Was never picked on the team. Then I grew six inches. I turned 16. Started dunking, kind of. I'm the best. Kobe. Shaq. Michael Jordan. Whoops. Um, but uh, but this this identity of like I am this thing. Yeah. Is services us sometimes. Yeah. But then if if a narrative goes outside of that, like if somebody were to say to me, "Rick sucks at basketball," I'm fine with it. Yeah. Because I, I'm not. I'm. I'm not going to be in the NBA. Right, right, right. And I'm not this thing. Yeah. But like, <clears throat> I still want to sell it. What I'm getting at is with stand up, like, you need to be funny. Yeah. And um, for the longest time, I often was and I often wasn't. Yeah. And when I would go on stage and like, I need to be funny, I need to get a laugh, um, I was obligated to be something that, and I don't mean this in a self deprecating way, that I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. Uh, the, I, at least this I feel the services me. I'm not the funny guy. I am funny. I, yeah. and I could be funny, but I don't have to be. Yes. Um, this idea of needing to be this cool guy, and I say this with the most respect, you're cool to me because uh, you seem, and I say that because we've only met a certain amount of time, very kind, and mm -hmm. you have an, an outrageous talent. Oh. And talent is cool. Yes. But I don't see you as the cool guy where like I would be nervous coming up to you <laughs> because I want you to think I'm a good basketball player so you think I'm cool too. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. like That's the way awesome. people with muscles, yeah. basketball players or 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 action stars, yeah. those are like cool guys to me. Yeah. Um we're not that. Right. <laughs> We're not. You're not that. You're, you know. You're like. No, you're, you're like. Right. What's up, man? Thank you for coming to do my podcast, man. You're just like a nice guy that, for whatever reason, has this superpower, <laughs> weird fucking thing. Yeah. So like, when I would, when I, and I told you before you came on, um, uh, I and I had messaged you a year before, and then Mikey, I think you reached out to me, right? Because you saw, I don't remember what it was, but you reached out for whatever reason. I had been wanting you to come on, and one of the things I was so attracted to was 
here's this guy that was like, hey guys, can I come, can I do this thing for you? You know, like you're a fucking kid. You're this kid who yeah. perfected the thing that he did yeah, since yeah, he was yeah, a kid. Yeah. yeah. And like, I don't mean nerdy in a, in a yeah. You, it's some, not, Somebody recently said uh, when I freestyled for them, dude, you're like a cool ass dad. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, a young, a so, young, a young cool yeah, yeah, you know, but like, yeah, there's that juxtaposition of like, hey, can I get some words? Maybe not fruits and, and, and maybe not animals, if that's okay. <laughs> and then they're like, and then, and the best videos are the ones where people are like, your own eagles were like, yeah, yeah, go ahead or whatever. And they're like, yeah. you know, they're not interested. If you were cooler, yeah, then it wouldn't be as much of a what the fuck. It would right. be like that guy. That's exactly what I thought. Totally, totally. So. That self acceptance, yeah, but but you could only accept things that you either can't change or you're okay with, yeah. And uh, uh, watching watching um, your omegles where people aren't interested in you because of what they judge, yeah, yeah, are the biggest turns, yeah. Absolutely. It's so. Tr- First of all, thank you, man, for saying that. Uh, thank you man, for saying that. No, be because cooler, you dude. Did. <laughs> Learn how to take a compliment, dude. <laughs> I, don't, I said the I same thing to David Blaine, and he just went like this. He just said blessings. Yeah, yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. He probably just disappeared. Uh-huh. <laughs> he just immediately vaporized. And, and if this were my podcast, we would bring him back. I would see if he could green screen himself in. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll send this uh, to you. We'll pay your editors for a pass on this sure. one, maybe. Uh, you know, um, no commitment just yet. Uh, <laughs> but no, it's true, man. People don't think I'm going to be good, and then and then I come out and I'm good, and it it's that gap of mm-hmm. expectation that makes you know makes it so explosive. Um, I used to audition uh, uh, for things uh, when you used to do it in person. Now yeah. everything's uh, t- self tapes. Yeah. But you would go in, and, and I would, especially if it was a silly role, I would want to bring the energy into the room. And not that that's the wrong choice. You know, it, auditioning yeah. is not acting, auditioning is impressing and showing that you could do something different and special and yeah. engaging. But what I found was uh, if I started with big energy, I better keep up and land it that way. Yeah. And what I ended up st- doing was. Uh, not faking it, but like, if I'm nervous or whatever, to to go in with authentic energy yeah. and not try and sell something yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, because then once it's action, then I'm still doing the thing, and maybe it's also oh look at how different the things are, which could be a good thing. Yeah. But also it gives that freedom of um, showing up how you are. Yeah. And that's what I was getting at with the stand-up thing. Like when I'm nervous or not feeling funny or at least not feeling big energy, yeah. to not have to wipe my hands and, and hope they don't see that I'm nervous, yeah. but to just be that thing because that is what I am. Yes. And good or bad, the best version of us is the authentic version. Yes. So then once you have that safety, and we talked about this, um, not this, but uh, your version of this on our first podcast yeah. of like being able to show up and mess up or whatever the thing is. Yeah. Wherever the pros and cons, the cons are, oh, he's nerdy, or oh, he's nervous, oh, he's yeah. stammering, oh, he didn't rhyme. Those are the cons. The pluses are you're not trying to hide anything, yeah. so you get to be present. Yeah. And then you're only building up. Yeah. Um, I love it. Yeah, so being present is is where we talked about is I think the superpower of any it's good performer. Definitely the superpower. And it makes me think of something too that I used to tell my students. I can't remember if I mentioned this on our on our first Your podcast students, together. Students uh, for drumming, right? I taught drum students, yeah. yeah. And and I've also taught some freestyle lessons as well during cool. the pandemic virtually, which was really fun. Uh and you I've should, got to do you some... should reach out to masterclass, see if they would do one with you. Oh, dude, I would love that. I would love that. Yeah. It would be fun to do a course. And I've done some group stuff too in the schools. Um where I would go and talk to like middle schoolers about freestyling and rapping and how to put it together. And uh, cool. it was really fun. But um, I would always say, uh, in order to sound, if you want to be able to sound great, you have to be 100% willing to sound bad. And mm-hmm. what I meant was like, if you've never done it before, you're not going to be good at it necessarily, right? Uh, you might have a spark for it, but your first freestyle is not going to be mind blowing amazing, you know? But you'll never be able to do the mind blowing freestyle unless you just do the first freestyle. Yeah. But I also think that same that same concept you made me think of it of if if you're if you want to sound great, you have to be willing to sound bad even now in the moment. Like for me, in the sense that if I need to sound great in a particular moment, like if I'm on a big stage and maybe some people that I really respect, I find out are in the audience, like some great rappers that I love. And I'm telling myself, well, now you have to be great. Um, I think that that really decreases the chances that I will actually mm-hmm. be great. Whereas if yeah, I didn't care. Because you're, you're not present anymore. Exactly. Exactly. The and, king, a shout out to the king, Will Smith, by the way, fail forward. That's yes. his motto. Shout out to the king, Will Smith. By the way, I saw on your Instagram you doing the Will Smith uh, 
monologue where he went off script uh -huh. talking about not he, having a father. It wasn't necessarily off script. I heard it was that he only had like one or two lines mm -hmm. written. I don't think so. Not the. I don't. Th I, you might be right. That's not my understanding of, of okay, what it was. Okay. 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 Um, that's what I had heard. But in any case, it's an amazing moment. One of the greatest that, uh, of television ever. Dude, and uh, your rendition, his rendition always brings me to tears. Your rendition brought me, I, I was glassy, man. You know what, Uncle Phil? I'm going to get through college without him. I'm going to get me a great job without him. I'm going to marry me a beautiful honey, and I'm going to have me a whole bunch of kids, and I'm a better father than he ever could be. There ain't a damn thing he can teach me about how to love my kids. You, it was amazing. It was amazing. Hey, man. I've been telling, that's why I said like, oh, comedian, comedian. I'm a dramatic actor now, man. Yeah. I'm a drama guy. Dude, you are. Mm -hmm. You are. Okay, so that's something I want to ask. It's a good you. rendition though, right? Oh, it was so good. Yeah, it was a silly, uh, it was a silly thing and <clears throat> people comment about it and I'll tell you something, that, you know, some compliments, some compliments hit harder. Yeah. Whether, depending what your mood is and who says it or yeah, how yeah, they yeah. say it or what it's about. Yeah. For whatever reason, when people say even little things like that, like people will comment on that. That one uh, makes me feel so fucking good. Yeah. Dude, it should, It, it really does. Because oh, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want Will to see it so bad. Oh, I bet he will, man. I think he will. Pun I, intended? Ah, uh, uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> do, do, do. Um, okay, so you do so many things. You are a comedian. You do stand-up. You- uh, Many hats. W many hats. Many hats. Um, we can offer you some as well. Um, comedian, actor, serious, dramatic- Comedic. All of these things are whatever. First and foremost, professionally, I'm a serious dramatic actor. That's what I am, dude. And then I'll For dabble. Real? I don't know. You know. Is that how you see it? I mean, do you identify with one part of what you do more than the rest, or is it all kind of one thing for you? In terms of podcasting, mm -hmm. acting, comedy. Be, seriously, I identify as uh, uh, somebody who loves bits and wants to play, and I happen to do it professionally. Hell yeah! But even before, it's uh. Uh, playing, yeah, uh, playing, doing bits, doing jokes, yeah. Um, not just, not just on that surface level of silly, but like, uh, it's not a coincidence that my best friends and any any relationships that I've been in, like, and, and my family too. My family's so funny, yeah. Uh, that's the way I connect with people mm. is doing doing bits and doing jokes and stuff. So yeah. like, that's my love language. So that's how I identify the other stuff. I'm, uh, uh so fucking lucky and grateful that I happen to be working at least at the moment yeah doing that thing but I don't identify as 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 that yeah I don't even identify as a stand-up comedian but I do identify as a as a comedian okay uh no that makes sense I actually it resonates a lot because I also love to play mm -hmm. and that's basically what I do and I think it's so cool that the that the verb for music is play you know uh, I play violin I play the drums um Unfortunately, you can't really say I play the freestyle, but that's how it feels. I, I'm playing while I'm freestyling. Yeah. And even before that, like running around the house, making up voices, doing little skits, you know, mm -hmm. uh, like I was trying to make my parents laugh, you know, and they would laugh at a lot of my stuff and nice. it felt really good. Uh, at a lot of my stuff. I like how, the way you were saying that just to even define a lot of my stuff was being like, well, they, there's some things they didn't laugh at, which I, I don't know, maybe if we could in post, if we could have done some animation. <laughs> exactly. If I just could have opened a window to my mind. Oh, man. Yeah. But no, the trauma still scars me. But um, no, they laughed at a lot of my stuff. And uh, no, I love to play as well. So I, that really resonates with me a lot, man. And I, that's what that's what our when you come on. That's what it is. It's a playtime for people that haven't. Uh, or aren't even, you know, whatever. Uh, when Lamor, when Lamorne and, and Harry were on, um, L we could anybody could be talking at any moment. But yeah. at, 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 then I would just play a beat, and then it, <laughs> and then Harry would have to just whatever we were just talking about, rap about it. Thank Vocally, you. you're at eight out of you know, if ten is the best. Damn, you think you his be. vocals are are better than than the shape that he's in? I think both are impressive, but the the whole scale of one to ten, like ten was the best that he could be. I'm oh, you're saying that he has a higher <laughs> ceiling in fitness and he doesn't singing? Perhaps. What's another way to say that? Yo, 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 yo. yo. I be deep in my feelings, assessing where you have the highest ceiling. Man, I'm looking and I'm trying to assess in which category would you truly be best with the highest ceiling for the most potential growth. I think in the gym you could do the most. Yeah. In, in, in improv, in long form improv uh, shows, um, yeah. there's uh, there's usually a monologist, mm. you know, at least in the format of uh, ASCAT and like what UCB and stuff does. What's uh, a monologist? Monologist, somebody who comes out and does a monologue. Lamorne actually oh, did oh, one yeah. uh, for... Uh, for some of my uh, uh, 
One of my another one of my favorite episodes is is this comedian. Her name is Lisa Gilroy. Okay, she's one of the funniest people in the world. Amazing, uh, and she does Ask Cat with UCB. Um, yeah. It's like that's like the top level of people performing for that stuff in California. Yeah, and uh, Lamorne was recently monologist, and what that means is you have your troupe of seven or however many people. Yeah, and before the show starts, th there's a guest monologist. So Lamorne would come out and do a monologue about whatever. He gets a suggestion. Yeah, freestyle rap, and he would not necessarily need him to be funny. He would just. Talk about him liking rapping. I just did this podcast with Harry Mack and blah, 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 whatever. And he would talk for two minutes. Yeah. And then all the improvisers are listening and they are taking pieces from these stories that they will then do scenes with. Yeah. And it could just be a small part of it. And then there's callbacks from different things or something that is directly analogous to it and doing that. Yeah. That's what it feels like when you're on where it's like our conversations are the monologues and then it's like all right do a scene yeah and we press play and then you'll just go and you'll literally if i we go like this you'll go for five minutes yeah and and i have been uh i don't know if fantasizing is the best word but like thinking a lot about <laughs> doing this more with the three of us yeah and what i would want is obviously we could all talk and do whatever sure but at least like the gimmick i say that we're quite literally like yeah. the the yeah. hook of it yeah would be like if you were a guest, if 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 you if people were to like hire you to guest on their podcast, yeah, but not as the the official guest, but like as the you you Harry Mackett, yeah. So yeah, you come in and then there's there's the host and the guest, yeah, and they're just doing their thing, yeah. And you're just on the couch, almost you're the musical artist, yeah. But instead of playing an instrument, at any moment they cut to you and you have to just do a rap of whatever they were just talking about. Dude, I love it. I love it. And I love doing it on, on your show, like with what we did with Lamorne. <sighs> My dude, that was one of the most... F it's so fun. It's so fun. And it stretches me, man, because like, you know, for a long time, I would never really touch um, like freestyles that were about something in an extended way. So like, um, like a longer narrative or where I'm trying to communicate an idea um, over a long period of time. And I, I don't know if that's clear, but I can explain it's it more. clear. I don't know why, but yeah. I know what you're saying. I would always instead just do battle rhymes, like what I call battle rhymes, you know? So it would be like, I, I have either a word or an object, um, like black tea, and then I'm just going to put that into a formula where I can say that I'm dope, you know? So right. every time like my I my prostate's so small, I, I got a great <laughs> flow when I go pee. <laughs> exactly. Right. Boost myself up uh, by talking about my prostate. I also cut, I'm, your audience is going to get mad because I cut off what you're going to do. Please do any of your black tea thing right now. <laughs> Yo, every time I spit, I do it right and exactly. Lyrics that I spit wake you up like black tea, right? So I would just do that. Uh -huh. And then maybe I'd free associate to something that has to do with tea. So I would say lyrically, they know that Max stays on the creep, climbing up the mountain like tea, it's steep. You know, so, oh, some wordplay. But it's <laughs> word all what? just wordplay. Operative word. You can't can play we? freestyle, but you can wordplay. <laughs> yes, exactly. You can't. That's right. Mm -hmm. W-R-I-T-E. I feel like we're indebted to you after this episode for setting up, <laughs> resetting up our cameras and giving me like, you're like copywriting on the spot. Oh. It's so, thank you. Um, but I would Blessings. always just do. Blessings, man. I would, always, <laughs> I would always just do battle rhymes. And I was afraid to, uh, because I knew that I could do that well, you know, and I was so practiced in it. But I was afraid to take a prompt. For example, like, oh, you're walking down a, uh, you turn right down a dark alley, you hear a creepy sound, what happens next? Uh, because it's long form? Yeah. Yeah. It's less forgiving um, because you have to stay on topic. And when I'm doing battle rhymes, there's plenty of room for filler, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and Harry I Mack. Exactly. Harry Mack. Or even just random bar about me being dope in this way, random bar about me being dope in this way. It's so funny that that's so genre specific of just like... <laughs> Do you rap about like insulting other people or how dope you are? It's like, <laughs> it's exactly. like, I, I feel like it's like those two options. I feel that way. Like I used to do a bit about how when, when people would take pictures, there's two options. They would either, or yeah. they're either giving peace signs or flicking off. And it's like, yes, even smiling. I sometimes think it's like, oh, hold on one sec. <laughs> you know, yeah, just take yeah. the picture of, of the moment. Yeah. It's just, it, they should all be candid. It's true. Or at least I, more candids. Yeah. But anyway, I, but I'm I, sorry. Go, no, go no, no, no. I, I struggle with the serious face in pictures because sometimes everyone else was doing the serious face and I'm just, you know. No, dude, you do that. There's, yeah. Yeah, here's, here's my advice to, yeah. to, to, to the youth. Yeah. Um, Speak. Uh, when, you're take, when you're taking pictures, um, you don't have to smile. If you don't want to smile, don't smile. Sure. But also, smile. If you if it's if it's not candid, if you're looking, yeah. smile and then when, when don't look at it. Yeah. Don't be like, let me see if I like if this is for a specific thing that you need, of course. Yeah. But just take the picture because 
you're not going to like the way you look. Yeah. Um, as they say in Men's Warehouse, you're not going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. No, that's not what they say. I'm not knocking them. They're great. Maybe. I don't know. But like, um, uh, by the way, if this were my podcast, just in case people don't know, I would make sure to put up an image of the Men's Warehouse uh, oh, yeah. thing. You can like the way you look. I guarantee well, yeah, it. Yeah, we got that. Uh, you don't need. I'm just saying like that would be my thing. Yeah. That's a very small example. Yes. But like in my head, I'm, I'm always thinking like you don't have to get the reference, but if the reference, if you don't get the reference and it seems like I was insulting somebody, yeah. you need to get the reference. Yes. You know? Um, yes. But l- w- you ever look at a picture from a year ago or more? Yeah. And you're not looking at how good you look. You're looking at, you remember that. That that was yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, at least yeah. I do. Yes. Like, oh, that was awesome. I don't care. It, you know, I don't care yeah. if you look, it's, it's cute. Yeah. You look like you're having a good time. Yes. And uh, there's something about um, wanting to look good where then uh, it's not authentic. Because yeah. we're, and I say this with the most, you're a good looking guy. Oh, thank you. Um, you too, man. But we're not, uh, we're not that. We're not one of those guys. No. We'll never be one of those I'm guys. I'm not like a European model. We're, yeah, we're not the aliens. No. You know? No. Um, well, but yeah, I get what you mean. Physically. Right. Physically. I'm saying, no. like, I, I use that, that like, sometimes there's, like, <laughs> a, I was dating a girl for a while, and uh, she had brought up this other girl and how pretty she is. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, it's insane. Yeah. And uh, there were, it was fine. We were able to talk that way. Yeah. Um, but she did say, do you think she's prettier than me? Mm, and wow. uh, this girl I was dating was was beautiful. Yeah. Um, uh also, I, and everyone is different with this stuff. Like that's an intense. I mean, that's a lot, man, to ask. Did you feel you had permission to a- answer honestly? I don't need permission from her. Yeah, uh, I've given myself permission a while ago to Facts. always answer that way. And Dude, not that, that not that lying doesn't serve a purpose. Sometimes I, I, we're humans. I get it. Yeah. But I checking in with why you're lying. Yeah. And am I trying to make myself more comfortable or somebody else? Mm. And. Um, Am I going to be upset if she's upset? So, like, there are also ways of doing it. Yeah, she's better looking than you, you fucking bitch. I mean, like, you don't say that. <laughs> right. But, like, the truth is, um, listen, this woman yeah. who who is a professional uh, actress, I'm sure she's ta- she's got some talent and everything, and, yeah, she, yeah, yeah. and she deserves blah, 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 but, like, she is making millions and millions of dollars because she is at this elite Yes. She's an... That's not human. That's, right, 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 right. She, this, you're beautiful... You're beautiful. Yeah. This is, this is. It's an unrealistic standard. This is, yeah. It's it's not, a, also, yeah. she's had stuff taken care of and yes. blah, 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 which yes. is fine. But like. Right. This is not real. Yeah. Um. And yeah, the conversation was fine. Yeah. But like, the sooner we could accept that, like, I have this theory that, that everybody's an eight to okay. themselves, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I like, that. like, oh, you think if you're attracted to. So if I'm an eight, yeah. anybody that's better looking than me is a eight, nine or 10. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if somebody else who might be ugly as fuck <laughs> to them, they got to be an eight because yeah, yeah, then yeah. they're going to be attracted to other ugly as fuck people that right. are eights to them. Yeah. That, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, and then hot <laughs> ass people that are what we would think are nines and tens, they're eights. So we're going to be a six to them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Except that as soon as you can accept that you're not hot. Yeah. You just smile and be ugly, dude. <laughs> smile and be fucking ugly, dude. That should be the title it's of this. It's got to be so I I I I'm friends with actors and yeah. actresses and yeah. and you know, in this business you know models and people who literally make their living by the way they look. So yeah. how could they not see that as such a big value to them? Right. So if that's threatened either by aging or or getting whatever makes they feel makes them look uglier and or somebody else who's pretty and they feel threatened by that. Yeah. Then that's their identity being threatened. Yeah. And remember when I said, how could you forget? When I said, I think you're, you're a talent. That's so cool. Talent. My heart melted. Talent is puddle. cool. Yeah. Kindness is cool. Interesting is cool. Being able to teach you something is cool and it's valuable. So like if you're hot, but also you're an awesome basketball player. Yeah. You're not going to care if you look ugly while you're dunking on somebody. Yeah. Because you have value outside of the looks. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Um, man, I mean, this shout out to Civil T, dude. I'm fucking lit up right <laughs> Let's now go, talking dude. about this stuff. <laughs> dude, I love it. I love it. But needing to look cool and needing to look hot, of course I want everyone to want to fuck me and think I'm cool. Yeah. It ain't going to happen. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, you know, something, you know, something. something, something. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, that can't be your value. Yeah, 100%. Um, so, like, when you're taking a picture or when you're going up to people, just be just. Just, yes. I mean, it's corny, but just be the thing that you are. Yeah. And that's kind of attractive. 
I agree. Dude, I, I do this. I started doing this thing that I heard recently. I think it comes from Casey Neistat, but I heard somebody else quoting him on it, which was that anytime he does something direct to camera um, for content, you know, where he just has to talk to the audience, mm -hmm. he does it in one take as a rule. I like that. And I really enjoyed that recently. Um, because yeah, I, like that. I would end up doing 20 takes, getting frustrated, and then turning it off yeah, and, and then moving it's on. And it's performative when you get to it and you're, you're not there. I forget who I am and yeah. why I'm even doing it, and suddenly I hate it. And when I just stick to the first take and I'm like, oh, it's okay if I say um, or do any of my natural mannerisms that make me a human, yeah. that comes through. And when I watch it back, I'm like, this is so much better. You know, than, yeah. than what I normally arrive at after 20 Does it mean we shouldn't work on our on our limiting our ums? Right. Um, I mean, you know, um, Harry Mack. Uh, Harry Mack. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 uh, um, the, uh, the silent pauses are fine. That's something that I have to teach myself. Because when I, when I watch back ums, I don't like, I don't love it. Yeah, yeah. I don't feel it's a problem, but it is something that's like. We all have things. I say, or whatever it is. I watch back one of our second, one of my solo episodes, and after every list, I would say, or whatever it is. You also say it's a really good question. Yeah, I do. I do. But I've actually reduced that a bit. I don't That's know a if really good noticed. observation. Thank you. That's a really good compliment. I also want to say, back to the picture thing, when I see guys biting down so their jawline is better, or when they're wearing oh, a cutoff no. or something, and you could, and they're 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 not making a fist. Yeah. But their their hand is loose, but you could see that they're flexing, and there's the line of the triceps. Oh no! Uh, it's game over, dude. I'm out. That's not it. I'm out. That's dude. not real, dude. No, it's not real, and you can tell. And you, it's I'm not I'm not looking at a guy who has good tricep lines. I'm looking at a guy that needs to sell his triceps, and for that reason, I'm out. Yeah, dude, agree 100. percent Um, getting back to freestyling, because I talked about how your show stretches me in a really great way. Um, where I have to be more telling a narrative more narrative. Yeah. Or just sticking to a topic, you know, and often a quite outlandish topic, um, which is so fun. Uh, the way, the, the way you said that, uh, <laughs> was so political, like politician, like, and it's, um, you don't want to say it's, it's crude or bad. You're like, uh, an outlandish topic, <laughs> but you know, no, they're fun. They're fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. You're talking about really. having diarrhea on each other. You yeah, know? yeah, exactly. Uh, or I said 40. dock the cock on your, on our most recent uh, session together. And we <laughs> animated a cock going into a wall. Yeah, it was great. It's uh, art, dude. It's all art. <laughs> it's art. It's not going to connect with everybody. Uh, well, well, you know, a lot of people, most people, most people, people like but, uh, yeah, I mean, people with taste. Um, Harry one Mack? thing I noticed about you, yeah, <laughs> is you, so you blew my mind with something in our last session. Actually, uh, you don't even have to tell me what it was. What was it? I'm just saying there's probably a ton of things. A ton of things. But the Bugs Bunny opera. Can we watch this part of this clip real quick, Sam? Can yeah, we watch this sure. together? Yeah. You guys seen it on the screen? Yeah. I've watched this like a hundred times. More. Yeah. His name is Clarence. He went to a public school. Psych private school. Yeah. You got that operatic sound like Bugs Bunny with the glove raising it around and holding it up, his shirt unties, the guy's breath turns wide and his face red and hides it, puts it up like a jack-o'-lantern, you jack, I'm jack, three jacks, no jack, none. No jack, no jack, no jack, none. I can put the low jack, low jack, low, low jack, jack on my run, run, yeah. run, so I will always find you. Look yeah. left, look right, bitch, I'm behind you. Damn. Ah, surprise, <laughs> I'm inside you, wait. <laughs> Dude, dude, so, that was so much fucking fun, so dude. So fun. I, I get so happy when uh -huh. I watch it. That's why I've watched uh -huh. it a hundred times, and I'm so much happier these last two weeks since it came out. Um, dude, okay, this is why that amazes me, because I had no idea that you were describing that scene in vivid detail and very accurately mm -hmm. while it was happening. I just thought you randomly name-dropped Bugs Bunny. Uh -huh. And it made no sense to me in the moment. And then when I watched this clip, I was like, this is unbelievable. So two things. One, why is that clip so embedded in your brain? Like, why are you able to, to, to depict that so accurately? And, and two, is freestyling always visual like that for you, where you're seeing this imagery and describing it? The reason it came up to me was because uh, uh, Lamorne's which we didn't see uh, uh, his hook on this, but right before it, yeah. uh, he was doing something that was very operatic. Uh, opera operatic. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, I was just commenting on him mm -hmm. doing uh, th that. And for whatever reason, you know, like just, uh, and I know you recall things and visualize things very much too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I do. I yeah. visualize things a lot. And uh, opera, the first thing of opera, I was just, I just remember that cartoon. Yeah. Uh, from when I was younger with, with Bugs Bunny doing that. So it wasn't until I said opera that I visualized that. Yeah. Um, Harry Mack. But the, the, <laughs> the, uh, 
<laughs> the idea of putting that video in, yeah, that's a very obvious example if somebody doesn't know the reference, but that's what I was talking about. Like sometimes I could disconnect. Now, if you just think I'm talking about Bugs Bunny, we don't need to connect on it. It's fine. Yeah. But there are some times where that will go on longer and the other person is like, what the fuck's going on? And I wouldn't pick up that they don't know what's going on because yeah. a lot of times people don't say, hold on, I don't know what you're talking about. They just go, cool, cool, right, right, right. Yeah. And then so I'm like, all right, cool. They know, of course they know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Everyone's in my head. Whatever I'm thinking, you're thinking. Everybody knows what I'm thinking. Yeah. So then I would go back and like, oh, they missed that. That's why I would want to show the audience. So at least the audience is in on it. Yeah. Then sometimes I feel like if I'm doing something and my guest doesn't know, but I'm letting the audience in, will the guest then later think I was fucking with them? Mm. And sometimes I am. Sure. When is that okay? Yeah. When is it not? And that's the craft. And I don't mean the craft of a comedian. That's the craft of like pushing boundaries with one another and reading the room. Yeah. But a big part of all of this yeah. is contextualization. Yeah. And I live edit. So do you do it after the fact? Yeah. Or do you do it during it? And uh, that was just, I don't know. Uh, I, I did. I, I it's did, so I good, I, I thinking, I don't think I was conscious about it, but if I had to be, I guess I would think like, didn't, didn't you know what I was talking? Like, I, Dude, it was, how do you not know what I'm talking about? It was so abstract to me because imagine <laughs> not knowing that. Did you see, have you seen that cartoon before? Are we, is there no. an age difference? Cause I'm only 26. You're uh, a little older than me. <laughs> yeah. A little bit. Had I, you never seen that cartoon? I hadn't seen that. Or maybe I had, but it didn't, you didn't stick. remember it. It didn't stick. Gotcha. So to me, you said with the operatics, imagine no context, the operatic sound like Bugs Bunny with the glove, raising it around. There's uh, a, there's a, <laughs> it's such a, that's such a. I don't know because if I could visualize it, so could you. That was, <laughs> yeah. and I just remember in that cartoon, he was doing it like this, and the guy, he, you know, while you do it, and while you're raising shirt it, untied. because while your hand is up, yeah. you have to keep singing. So it was yes. so long that Bugs Bunny took the glove off and left. Yeah, I and watched the glove the cartoon. was staying there. Yeah, so I was just like, yeah, yeah I don't know. I was just like, ever, that's also something that I have to check myself with with stand up. Like a lot of, are you familiar with the term A to C? No. So A to B is what it was an obvious thing. So like if uh, bad version, um, uh, uh, if there's a T here uh, and I would be like, oh, hey, thanks for my coffee. Yeah. And like I'm making a sarcastic <laughs> joke. You get what I'm saying. Yeah. It's not T. It's coffee. Yeah. Right. A, a to C would be, uh, 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 I mean, well, it's such a bad example. But if I were to be like, hey, man, uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for getting me something to eat. You know, it's it, like, oh, I, it's harder to get. Yeah. 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 Because I'm skipping B. If yeah. I were to go A to B to C, it would be, uh, hey, you got me a coffee. Uh, I'm kind of hungry. Thanks for getting me something to eat. Yeah. You know, so sometimes you skip B to you get to C. Steps. Yes. Um, and that's <clears throat> fun if everybody could assume what B is. So it's yeah. a shorthand. It's almost like a callback without establishing it. Yeah. So going A to C, if it lands, that's cool. As a trick, you skip B. Yeah. Going A to D is even more impressive. To do A to D, you often either have to know the person or you have to have some callbacks in. Like when yeah. I said, um, Harry Mack, I think I established it, but people know Harry Mack is um, so you don't, right? Yes, 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 yes. So, uh, oh, fuck, what was the point I was getting at? Help me out. So what the, were we talking the visualizing about? the cartoon, Bugs Bunny with the glove held up. Yeah, I, I'm not remembering now. Fuck. It's, but I see what you're saying. I mean, I see how it relates. You went, in that case, to me, you went from A to D potentially. Because I didn't have the, right. the so, so, commonality. Yeah, so if you don't know, right, yeah, here's what it is. Yeah. I remember what I was saying. So with stand-up. So that, you're right. So I I went A to C yeah. because you know B, which happens to be Bugs Bunny. But <laughs> if you don't, Double it doesn't B. make sense. So I still struggle with this. And I used to, I used to do jokes and I would be referencing things that are so obvious to me. Yeah. That I have license to not establish. Yeah. Because once you establish it, it almost waters it down. Yeah. And I didn't con connect with, excuse me, why would the audience know B? Yeah. I never set up B. They don't know B. They're not in my head. Yeah. And I would do all of these things that wasn't working, and I didn't know why. Yeah. And it was su such a little switch, which was, oh, something as simple as, they have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. Yeah. Which, I can't say it, because there's this there's this feeling I have with, with, um, letting the audience in on it where I want the audience to be in on it, but yeah. I don't want to tell them. Yeah. Uh, I've used this analogy before, but it's like, we don't believe that Robert Downey Jr. is actually Tony Stark. Yeah. 
but he doesn't ever look to camera and be like, I'm just acting. We buy right. into it. And the reason we buy into it is because of the format. We understand this is a movie. These yeah. are actors. This is how it goes. Yeah. When you're doing uh, comedy or a live performance in general, especially when you're playing yourself, yeah. this is him. Yeah. There's an artistic license, but we believe what he says. Yeah. We believe he might be being satirical, but it's him doing it. Yeah. So if I were to be like, uh, you know, if I were to say, hey, uh, um, I want to make a joke that I wanted something to eat, but I really didn't. Yeah. Um, oh, you got me coffee. Thanks. How come you didn't get me any food? <laughs> it's like, uh, okay. It's like, <laughs> right well, now it's the joke. Yeah. It's is too gone. spelled out. So knowing when they know B. Yes. And what is in the zeitgeist of B? Is another great example, a great example, is like when I would go to London <laughs> yeah. and there's certain, I love performing in London is why I say that. Amazing. Uh, there are certain American sayings that I didn't realize were American yeah. sayings or turn of phrases. Yeah. Um, terms. Why didn't this connect? You have to know that. And that's, that is, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's just an interesting part yeah. of things. Oh, 100%. It makes me think, okay, a couple things. One, it makes me think there's this Nas song. I think it's called I Gave You Power. But it's this song where the whole song is a metaphor. He's speaking from the perspective of a gun. It's like a personification of a gun. And it's so good. But it's funny because in the first 15 seconds while the beat is warming up, he's like, oh, it's crazy, man. It's almost like, it's like I'm a gun. And then the song starts. <laughs> and I was always like, damn, they didn't need to say that right there. Because when you listen to the song, it, it's so well done and it unfolds so organically as you listen. And it's obvious that he's a gun right. if you're paying attention. And so, and later I found out that DJ Premier made the beat and he actually, in the studio, he was like, I don't think we need to tell them that. And Nas felt like they wouldn't know B. Yeah. So it's, it's titling stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I would argue that you could not put it in the song. And if you name, but if you name the song, I'm a gun. Yeah. That, and you're listening to it. I mean, st it's still giving it away. Yeah. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Billy Joel's, uh, you're always a woman to me. Mm. Uh, 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 she cuts like a knife, but she's always a woman to me. Yeah. Is, uh, about the city of New York. Wow. Um, okay. Uh, 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 it, you know, it could be, it, it, she could, she could rob from you. She could steal from you, but it's all, it, it's my city. Yeah. But he never That's says beautiful. that. And I never knew that though. Right. right so right, right. I was missing it. Yeah. And once I found that out, uh, I appreciated the song more. So it's that line of when do you, yeah. how do you let the audience in on it without winking to them? Yeah. So there is a way of, I don't know this, uh, the, the, the power song, yeah. or at least I can't picture it now unless I heard it, but I sure. don't really know it. Yeah. There are ways of let, like, if he did something like, you know, uh, uh, cocked back or saying something yeah. that, that it could be a double entendre or an analogy or something yeah. to hint to it. I'm, by he, the way, he, I'm not and, critiquing and one of the does, greatest ever. But. He does throughout. He does throughout. The, 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 That's what you're saying, so you yeah, don't need it. The wordplay is so good that you get it, but it was almost like he didn't need it. Or maybe if they had, and I'm also not critiquing because it's a classic jam and Nas is my favorite, but uh, if it had gone at the end, maybe, you know, because like Common has that song, I Used to Love Her, which is all, it's about a woman, but it's about hip hop. And the and last reveals it line, at the end. Yeah. who I'm talking about, y'all, yeah. is hip hop. Yeah. And so then, and so that, and then you're like, and then you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then you go back and listen to the yeah, whole thing yeah, again, yeah, and your mind yeah. is blown. But uh, the other thing that I was thinking about that sort of relates to how you do your podcast, where you 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 do these um, visual references to cue the audience in and and make sure they know B right in this in this sort of language. If, we're talking if about. I feel it's in, it's also it's important to where where if 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 you don't know B, yeah, it's okay, yeah. I'm gonna get. It, it I'm gonna get. I'm gonna let you in on it. Right. No. No. Now. I'm saying if you don't know, if you don't know B, and that doesn't. There are some times where it's better that the the some of the, the people that get to figure it out get to feel. I get it. Yeah. Where I don't. I don't yeah, always yeah, yeah. want. It's semantics. But I'm, I'm sorry, I interrupted. But I don't no. always want to define B. Right. There are just some times where either B makes it better or without B, it's contextualized the wrong way. Yeah. But I'm sorry, go on. No, you're right. And I also, just going off that, like sometimes knowing B is meant to be special for certain people who know it. Like uh, just now I'm going off on these hip hop songs, but there's this the Eminem song where it goes, I am whatever you say I am. If, if I, I wasn't, wasn't, why, why would, would I say, say I am? am? Which is Rakim. I'm the R to the A to the K I am. If I wasn't, why would I say I am? Very A, a lot of people who know the Eminem song don't know that it's a Rakim like, tribute mm -hmm. you know, uh, in that moment. And it doesn't take anything away from it for them, but for the people who do know, it makes it extra special. Yep. So sometimes it's like knowing B puts you in that sort of uh, 
club of like, oh, that's that's cool. That's like I know something about that. I've quoted this a few times and I don't remember know the quote, so I'm paraphrasing. But Stanley Kubrick had referenced something about um, uh, you could you could sh- tell people things, yeah, uh, and or show them things, or you could let them figure it out. And there's yeah. an art to guiding them so they could figure it out. Yeah. But when 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 we tell you something. Oh, now we know. But when you, when you, the audience gets to figure it out, then there's a sense of ownership to it. Yeah. Like, oh, like I figured something out. So yeah. if you're able to let the audience figure it out without tell them, all else equal, why would you not do it that way? Right. And uh, that is something where if people get the reference, they figured it out. That's great. Yeah. And if we did, and if they didn't tell us, they know like, oh, I I figured this thing out. And yeah. I think it also makes you feel closer to the artist. Like yes. we have a similar mindset. Yeah, totally. It's like I like Rakim. Oh, Eminem was inspired by Rakim. Mm-hmm. That's cool. We have that commonality yeah. and that overlap. Dude, I agree. I I also think it's funny. Like I think about our live show, which you came out to my live show in Los Angeles, and uh, with Lamorne, with Lamorne, whom of which I know knew was a fan of yours, and I didn't know how good buddies you were, but I didn't know you didn't know each other at all. Yeah, no. And that made me feel. You said on the podcast that made me feel so cool because, I mean, I've said this to you already, and I know you know this, but I, I've I've been a fan of yours for a while. Yeah, and I know Lamorne is. Yeah, oh, and dope. and we also rap all the time when yeah. he comes on my podcast. Yeah, so then I'm like. Oh, I get to introduce you to somebody you're oh, a fan of? No, I appreciate it, man. It was so fun. Yeah, we really didn't. Oh, here and here we awesome are at the show. show, dude. Yeah, so it was dope. so cool. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it, man. And and my uh, uh, and John Michael, who d- does my editing, uh, yeah, he, he came out to it too. That's right. That's right, uh, dude. It was great, man. And I I think of our live show with what you're talking about because in a weird way, the way that you do the animations and overlays to help cue the audience in at times. It's sort of like how I have the word or topic on the screen behind me because I've, I've thought about this where it's like having the word on the screen behind me opens up so many possibilities that would not exist if the word wasn't there. Like um, if the word wasn't there, meaning if you didn't have the word or if the audience didn't know that what the word was, if the audience didn't see the word on the screen, how is that different from when uh, an audience, uh, somebody gives you a word? So check this out. Like, let's say. Uh, the word was dog. Okay. Deal. Um, even though normally it's no food or animals, but if the word Instead was dog, of both. yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Woof. Woof. Uh, okay. So I have the word on the screen, yep. right? And so I know what you're gonna say. with that, people don't forget it and I can point to it and play with it in ways that I couldn't. So you don't have to hold it in your mind. Like the first line might be obvious. So I say off at the top, I'm the freestyle God. Y'all know when I rhyme, I bark like a dog. And then I can be like, wait a second, freestyle, freestyle God is what I said first, but read it backwards. Dog is God in reverse. Right. I could do that. Yeah. Or then while it's still up there and th- we've kind of like outsourced this common mind. Right. And then I can say, you know, oh, uh, I'm a rap dog and there's no one who could hate this D O G. Cause I do only greatness. Great. My eyes are almost watering. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, so I could do all that and it's no extra effort from the audience to follow along. Yeah. So in a way, it's like this is the visual overlay for me that's like connecting the dots for everybody out there, yeah. similar to your podcast. In so then you obviously could see the, the DOG in your head, but if you're referencing one of the letters or something, they're yeah. not seeing it. Let them see it. Absolutely. Yeah. Or sometimes I'll cover a letter or I'll be like slash the last letter because this is just what I do. You know, yeah. um, or slash the first letter. I'm the rap OG. Right. You know, and mm-hmm. suddenly there's all these possibilities that uh, wouldn't be there. Slap the, slash the middle letter. I'm part of the Directors Guild of America. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, right. I want to hear more about uh, the uh, you coming out and doing a longer form thing. I don't know if you guys have to cut it at a certain time, but I have to pee. Can I go pee and come back even yeah. for a, a couple minutes? Yeah, longer. Do it, please, right, man. Cool. Yeah. Um, uh, hit him with a uh, hit him with a uh, let them visualize what it's like when I'm peeing while I'm gone. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Sam, drop a beat. Be uh, be specific. Okay. Hit me. Oh, down the hall to the right. What's that? <laughs> yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. One, two, one, two. Flow, stay. Classy. 
we gon' send this through, yeah When I spit, yo, I keep it tight The bathroom is down the hall to the right, yeah A studio that you can explore It's not just one option, there are two doors If one of them is occupied, you'll be fine But if both are occupied, you'll have to wait in line Hopefully for Rick, he can go right in So he can come back to the podcast once again, yeah When I'm spitting, I'm making people listen Rick's not here right now because he's pissing Following my intuition so you can see He drank a lot of black T, now he's got a P. Matt coming off the top of this, kill it for certain. Yo, my flow's top rank. Urine. When I spit like this, it's never cumbersome. On the list of freestyle rappers, I am number one. I put it down for y'all, never number two on the list. Even though these rappers got me pissed, force me to shit up on the game when I'm spitting out the flames. When it comes to kicking lyrics, yo, it's never been tame. And Mikey was asking if he can walk by the cam. We'll probably have to show it, cause Mikey's my man. I flow without no plan. When I be rhyming, there's no way to stop me. Whether you're drinking a lot of the black tea or maybe the coffee you still gonna have to urinate for sure i'm great my brain be in the purest state i'm flowing i really get you open i really start to go in my inferno of lyrics is eternal i'm a stand-up guy urinal break it down for all of y'all my sounds insane i leave your brain twisted like water that's down the drain i got rhythm like percussion whenever i be crushing and busting rappers who i'm flushing down into the sewage system when i do this listen that coming with the truest vision you just sitting there peeping the greatness y'all know there's no one alive who could hate this Y'all know we plugged in like shows for the Comcast Once again, we just made it back to the podcast Yeah, he's the flyest man He doesn't even have time to dry his hands Yeah, you know he's coming straight in with the wet ones Place your bet, son, other rappers feeling threatened And he didn't dry his hands, but we not worried He skipped that step cause he was in such a hurry To get back here and sit in that chair And come up with lyrics and spit them with flair Yo, Rick, can I pass this one to you? Kick around my <laughs> what you gonna do? Horrible timing. That's right when the beat faded out. Now I'm on a live acapella route. It's okay. No, it's okay. I, 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 we, we've, been, we, we, we've been going for over an hour. And I wasn't yes. in a rush. The bathroom just don't have paper towel. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't like when, a, when a, it, it's air dry only with the air dry machine. Oh, really? I'm not yeah. going to use that. And why not? Because uh, I don't believe that a hundred out of a hundred people, when they wash their hands, they wash their hands. I think most people just wet their hands. Yeah. And even when you put soap on, are you emulsifying? Your hands are still dirty. Good work. Then you're putting this into this machine, and it's taking it up, and then it's going to be blowing that fucking dirty onto my hands. I just wash my hands. Yeah. I didn't go in there to dirty my hands. And I right. say that with most, most respect. Yeah, sure, sure. But if there <laughs> are paper towels, you'll, you'll indulge? I wanted it. Because yeah. I, that paper towel acts not only as a as, as dry my hands, but now I also get to open the door with it. I then get to find a garbage can, crumple it up. It is more get sanitary. Get some buckets. It is more sanitary. I'll drop that in the su- suggestion box. Okay. And maybe we can have that for you next time. Paper towels. Yes. Bring the cameras a little bit this way. Yes. And I think then then you guys got a fucking hit on your hands. Let's go. Hey! Let's go. From the man himself. Dude, I appreciate it. So tell me, yeah. and, and then, you know, this is your podcast, and whenever, I don't mean to push it over, but no, I do, we're, I'm, I'm good. I'm I do good. want to hear yeah. more about, because when you came on, on to take your shoes off, yeah. you had to do this thing. How does that feel? Also, I can't imagine that's the only time you, you do that. No, no, no. I started... Uh, I started exploring it a few years back. Like I, I remember when it happened. Actually, it was like during the um, pandemic. I would do these live streams. I still do them sometimes, but uh, I would do them a lot. And people would, you know, give suggestions in the chat. And I would usually just take the suggestions that I could use for battle rhymes. You know, I would just do what I what I was comfortable with and what I felt good at. And then at one point, somebody gave some kind of prompt. I don't remember what it was. It was like, oh, you're a, you're a lawyer freestyling your way out of a, a you know litigation case or something like that. And I, I remember in my head, I was like, my instinct was like, nope. And then I was like, you know what? Fuck it, man. Let's fucking go. How long <laughs> did it go? It went for like at least a minute, maybe two. And I dove in, dude. And it was so exhilarating. It was so exhilarating. It broke open my brain. And from that point on, I was like, yeah, I do this now. I definitely, I, I'm down to try. And can it I, doesn't always work. Can I give you one? Yeah, let's go. Um, are you single? No. And are you able, are you comfortable playing a character of yourself as if you were? Sure. Um, maybe this could be you 10 years ago? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And you are at a museum. Yeah. And uh, Guggenheim. Guggenheim, yeah. That's in New York. That's the spiral one? Uh, 
I wasn't even picking a Guggenheim museum. I was just a Guggenheim exhibit. Okay. Yeah. 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 But okay. yes, the spiral. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. That's that's on you. Okay. Yeah. And <laughs> you went because you are getting into because you're younger. You're getting into music. Yeah. Uh, rapping. Yeah. Lyrics, poetry, and admittingly, you don't know where to begin to become more cultured. You're just I've, museums are a thing. I'll try and do that. Yeah. Yeah. You see. Three women, mm. and one of them, you like, I really want to talk to this girl. Yeah. But it's intimidating because that's, I mean, do I, need I say no, more? No, I get it. That's intimidating. Yeah. You also are aware of not wanting to cross a boundary. Yeah. Because she's with her friends. Yeah. They're having a thing. You're also checking in with yourself of like, am I making an excuse why I shouldn't go up to her? Or am I trying to better understand how to do it appropriately? Yeah. So you have the conversation that's in your head yeah. of how do I do this? <laughs> yes. Ultimately, you decide you're so scared, but you're going to because your job wasn't just to be cultured at museums. Your job was to challenge yourself and to grow. And this is art. This is life. This yeah. is emotions. Yeah. And I'm going to do this. Yeah. What's my plan? Then the plan is because you've read books, okay, <laughs> yes, and I you have. don't know if this is the right thing or not, but... The trick is not that you're that you're going to try and make her jealous, but you don't talk to the one you're interested in first. Oh, okay, yeah. You talk to the friend, but you're also not necessarily hitting on the other one. Right. You just are getting the group's attention, so she looks at you before you look at her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What is it that you want to talk to her about? Fuck yes. The one thing you know about the Guggenheim Museum or whatever. <laughs> yeah. They happen to be at that thing. Yeah. Let it be that it's a spiral. You know about yeah. spiral. You know why this and where the spiral comes from. It's it's because you got to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. And you tell them that, and now they think you're. So now she's interested. Yeah. And then you hit on her. Yeah. And what's the pickup line again? What what is it that you said? I said this. Uh, I thought this spiral was going to be what makes me dizzy, but in fact, it's your it's right. You. I forgot. I yeah. remember you told me it was a while. I apologize. Yeah. You no, a while right. ago. Yeah. Um, and it worked. <laughs> And uh, anyway, you know the story. Yeah, it's um, easy. Uh, uh, and we'll take it from we'll take it from uh, you walking up to the museum, not even thinking about women or anything. All right, let's do it. We're gonna need both beats. We're gonna need both beats. I'm so At least. Pumped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Listen. Uh. Yeah. Come on. Listen. Yeah. Okay, this is a true story I'ma bring you live I'm in my young 20s, a single guy I live by myself in my small apartment Smoking weed in the morning so I can start bent But today, yo, I wanna go and prowl I wanna get more culture to increase my style Cause lately, I've been feeding my soul and my spirit By freestyling over beats and cooking raw lyrics But I don't have enough that I can reference I gotta go to new places where I've never been I gotta find some info, send it through my mind So I figure I'll take a stroll to the Guggenheim Out there on the streets in New York Now you see them One foot in front the other towards the museum I'm standing outside I know the architecture is vital I've heard that it's built like a spiral I've never seen with my own eyes though So I open up the door slowly Okay here we go G I'm walking in And I'm instantly filled with passion A single man with no attachment So my soul is wide open And my heart is open too And I'm looking for some love That's what I pursue Love from the art that I see on the walls When I peep out the pieces my brain starts to evolve god damn i'm looking up high it is indeed shaped like a spiral that elevates to the sky i wonder why it is the truth is i don't know i wonder if that will be useful later on though that's some foreshadowing <laughs> i'm moving through the room yeah suddenly my whole soul is consumed yeah i've been here for about 15 minutes but i feel like the size of the display is infinite i'm not timid i'm looking around sometimes i feel awkward by myself with both feet on the ground i put my hands in my pockets at times and then i I wonder, but then I bring it back to the art so I won't blunder. And suddenly, out of the corner of my eye, something beautiful, it starts to arise. At first I figured that it was a piece of art, but it's not art that is fluttering my heart. I look to the side so that I can finally see, not just one beautiful woman, but three. And out of that trio, there's one that I know was made for me, bro. Should I approach her? Let's see. No, I probably can't do that. That doesn't seem right. I mean, let me try to exercise a bit of foresight. Now my thoughts are rushing so fast, I can hardly even understand what I'm really thinking and I feel like it's a small opportunity that I might miss even if I'm 
blinking, now I'm shrinking down to size. Okay, take a deep inhale, exhale, never been frail. Feel my feet up on the ground, now I'm feeling grounded. Now let me think about how I might go about this. Now here's the thing, she does look scrumptious, bro, but I do not want to make her uncomfortable. I mean, I wanna go up and say, it's beautiful, you found me, but I don't wanna cross a boundary. How would I feel as I was with my boys and she came up to me? Well, I would make the woo noise, I'd be mad excited, but that might not go both ways. So should I risk this here today? And then I start to consider. And I start to figure, why did I come here to see the pretty pictures? I wanted to come to expand my horizons. And it's true, the art does have me vibing. But if I'm not ready to take this leap, then it feels like my adventure in culture is cheap. Like if I'm not prepared to stretch my boundaries myself and do it for my spiritual health, then maybe there's no way I can be the dopest lyricist. I gotta understand where my heart and my spirit is. I'm building myself up. I'm about to get loose. Nah, maybe it's inappropriate. But is that an excuse now? Both sides of my brain are starting to argue they both make good points i don't know which part's true i mean am i making an excuse because i'm scared or will i really make her feel very underprepared i'm not sure i gotta make the choice suddenly i listen to my heart for the voice it says mac go ahead make your approach but you gotta use the right strategy to do the most next beat okay we gotta do this all right, I can't just go. No, I can't go right to her. That wouldn't work. Okay, what can I do? Okay, all right. Yeah, can't go right to the one. That's not the way to get this done. If I try that before it even starts, it ends. I'm better off starting with a friend. I won't really go there and flirt. Nah, see, that would never work. Cause I don't wanna make the one I'm focused on jealous. Yeah, this is the story I'ma tell, bruh. Hey, yo, I'm gonna walk up to the friend, start the conversation there just to make her aware. That way she can look at me before I'm looking at her and she'll become aware. Hopefully she'll like what she sees. Yeah, this is my opportunity. They're standing right in front of a famous piece. Now I gotta let my knowledge release. I walk up to the side, say to her friend, doesn't it seem like the art never ends? Right when I said it, she was making a joke to her friend that didn't hear me. My heart got broke, so I tried again. Um, ahem. <laughs> hey, maybe we can be friends. Just kidding. But don't you like this art? She was like, yeah, but are you smart? I was like, whoa, coming in harsh. Yes, indeed, I am intelligent, not a farce. And let me tell you why this information's vital. Do you know why it's shaped like a spiral? She says, no. Can you explain? Well, the shape is meant to disorient your brain. See, it's meant to be separate from reality so that the art is not viewed as a fallacy, but rather like an alternate path we could take. An alternate universe, for goodness sake. A different way of viewing the earth, an ultimate dimension That was the purpose of the building invention The reason for the architecture on the original blueprints Was not to make you feel stupid But rather to make you feel separate from your day to day So that you can stay for days and enjoy the artwork Without comparing it to normal life Yeah, I outperform you, right? Then she looks at me and says, is that true? And I look at her and say, yes I do Believe it is And her friend looks over and says, how do you know so much? Who showed you? I was like, well, funny you should ask me and Then I start to spit something nasty off of the top And I look in her eyes Suddenly I feel them real <laughs> butterflies fluttering all inside of my chest and i look to her and i know she's the best it's time to invest time to spit my line but i gotta do it in the form of a rhyme i say baby girl let's get busy i thought it'd be the spiral that was making me dizzy but in fact it's you <laughs> about to faint feeling strong right now not quaint she almost fainted her friend she caught her then suddenly she brought her back to upright and i looked in her eyes but they looked like the heart eye emoji she's fly then she falls into me for the hug and we walked out together this story's true love <laughs> Okay, I think we found our clip. <laughs> wow, man. How do you feel about that? Dude, I had so much fun, man. Your eyes were closed for a lot of it. You're visualizing it? Yeah, yeah, have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Your it, eyes aren't usually closed. No, no. Picturing uh, picturing everything I said? Yeah, picturing the whole story unfold. It would have been too too distracting to look at anything else. What did you see? Did you see three girls or were you just, were you seeing the information of there are three girls? You know what's funny? Oh, I was seeing the three girls. Right. I was seeing the imagery. But one thing that's funny to me is how vague I think the imagery really is. Like what I mean is like if you could print what my brain saw, it's like they don't even have faces necessarily, you know? And like I have this vague view of being inside this spiral room, but it's not like if we printed it out, you would look at it and know what mm -hmm. it is. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's very weird. It's like it's like a loose sketch. There's a memorization trick that if you need to memorize stuff where uh, to visualize it, like, mm -hmm. uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Do you know Jim Quick? I mean, could you give me a minute? <laughs> Go for it, man. Uh, which Jim? First of all. <laughs> Jim Quick. Oh, I thought you were asking me to answer you fast. 
I oh, understand. No, 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 no. Uh, this may be who it is. Yeah, he's, that, a, he's a memory. Uh, I don't think he invented the strategy, but he's a memory expert. Yeah, where you could you just go into a room and you picture all the items of the things. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not that you need to be able to paint the picture. It's just that you need to be able to have just enough information to be able to see yeah. it and remember it. Also, uh, I don't I don't think we're in frame there, but I was thinking about that with the Guggenheim right there. Yes. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Oh, oh, you must be uh you must be talking about my Webby Award. Congratulations, dude. Ah, uh, yeah, thank you. Should we yeah. can we show a picture of it at least if we're not going to pan I'll, up I'll, to it? I'll bring it down. Okay. What'd you get it for? Uh, what was that? What'd you get it for? Uh, I got it for my prom night freestyle video where I freestyled uh, in DC for a bunch of uh, guys in tuxedos dressed for prom. I don't know that video. I'll have to watch it. Oh, dude, I'll text it to you. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So nothing really. Just you know, dude, that's incredible. And there's 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 more there's more there's more to be doing with that. I mean, maybe it's just <laughs> what you do. This podcast. I mean, I know this is what you do for a living, but yeah, there's a storytelling aspect to it where it's not just that you're doing it, Jim Quick, but you're also doing it so well. <laughs> Where it could be animated or 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 acted out, like you know, what would be so cool is to yeah. like have these uh, have people gift you these these um, specifics and these stories that you could even if it was just, if it, even if it's just an isolated just this one, yeah, where we where you show uh, the setup of it so we know what's improvised, and then uh, I would love to do this with you. By the way, I mean, yeah. you have a crew that wants to do this stuff, but I, for one, I would love to co collaborate and direct that. Dude, where, yes. And then we 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 shoot that. I would love to do something, and even if it's not that one, like I would love to I would love to do a video with you where we come up with something like that, maybe at a live show or something, yeah. where it's clearly improvised, and uh, then I have to do it. And then part of the part of your job isn't just to tell that story, but also like to set things up that either like oh we know we could get this location or yeah. how, let's see how rick the, if we have to be on the moon let's make this a challenge you know and we have to find a way to do these things dude i would love that man my my heart was beating so fast through that whole thing uh the adrenaline of that uh-huh is so much crazier than battle rhymes that was it was so cool man and, uh dude thank and you and also man. and also like there's so many different th things that you have to be able to do like to remember what your pickup line was and yeah. to remember <laughs> that the boundaries and to remember you know uh are they gonna think i'm the way you said think i'm smart but just like oh this is the only one thing i know and yeah and to walk up into the spot like you had there's also like the magic trick of remembering the thing yeah 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 and then uh, execution of it it's so fun. Also, this oh, is dude. stuff I don't need to, I mean, I can just tell you after, but like, that was so <laughs> fucking cool, man. Oh, dude, I appreciate it so much, Rick. Man, I, thank you so much for that, and thank you for coming on this show, man, and, mm -hmm. and uh, thank you for fix, you know helping us get our cameras sorted and, and uh, <laughs> everything, dude. It's, it's, it's a blast, man. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what, uh, what happened when I was peeing. Yeah, yeah. There's more. There's more freestyles when you yeah. were peeing. Yeah. Uh, by the way, and if you don't want to, we can cut this out, too, of uh, me asking you, but would you want to freestyle at all? And you, there's zero pressure. No. Cool. No. Yeah. When uh, when when I'm freestyle and dirty talk. Yeah. And small talk. Yeah. It's like if I'm not in the mood for it. Yeah. Then uh, also after that. Mm -mm. Yeah, dude. Give me a beat though. <laughs> No, 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 no. Uh, no I'm, I'm not. I'm not in the mood for it. If this were on my podcast, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. That I would probably do it. Yeah. Because. Uh, I'm in control of the edit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, totally. But, but on somebody else's like, I don't know. I get it. Dude, no problem. Your your That's, presence is a present. That, dude, that was so fucking fun. And I'm going to follow up, I think, because yeah. I come up with ideas and then I forget. Yeah. Uh, I really want to do one where... where like the music video is, yeah. is, 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 is... Basically, it's a short film. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've always wanted to animate those types of freestyles. Anytime it's a wacky story, I've always thought it would be so dope to So animation to animate. is definitely a, a part of it, but uh, a, at least open to that. But what I'm picturing now is is live action. Live action, yeah. And also what I'm thinking is I might want to write a story. Yeah. <laughs> like a short story, like a, a page. Yeah. Right? Um, and then... I think you just pulled at least a page out of your ass just now for that prompt, man. But that I'm saying amazing. I haven't prepared... Like, yeah, I have, yeah, like, because yeah. I might want to, like, have locations in mind or whatever. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. I don't know, but I, I might want to prep something and then give it to you or read it to you on the spot and you do it and then when people watch uh, the opening will be the story so they get to read the story yes um uh, basically when you are it was yeah. just basically showing you read it and then they get to read it yeah and then it's go right away dissolve into the music video that we make thereafter yeah dude so sick yeah i want to do that are you down. into that i'm dude yes without a doubt oh yeah what's that i like the right oh yeah i got you uh <laughs> all dude. right 
This is amazing. Thank you again, Rick Glassman, my friends, Woo. the illustrious. Appreciate you, bro. Bye, Harry. Uh, yeah. Bye, bye. And theme music. That was fucking cool, dude. Show you the